Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. So continuing to look at some of the powerful language features of SQL Script, we're going to take a look in this video at the map merge concept. So map merge is a bit of language construct in SQL Script that allows you to attach a, a mapper function uh, or basically just a, a block of code that you want executed for every record in a uh, table of data, uh, an internal table, an array of data, without having to create the for loop construct to, to loop over each record. And, uh, and it also unions the results back together at the end. And you might wonder, well, you know, if it's basically the same construct as a, as a for loop, then, then why do I need another syntax to do it? And the idea here with the map merge is that it's a lot more efficient and uh, processes faster because it can do things in parallel. So we, we take, you know, the we often need to do things one record at a time in a very imperative loop at kind of way, but we lose a lot of performance when when we force HANA not to use parallelization by going one record at a time. Map merge allows us to take the benefits of designing our logic to be one record at a time, but still get the technical benefits of fast parallel execution. Now that's a that's a simple introduction to the concept. My colleague Rich Heilman has done lengthier videos on the map merge con uh, concept in the Open SAP courses in the past, and I will put a link in the show notes uh, to the unit of a previous Open SAP course that I think you should have a look at uh, to really learn more about the map merge concept. I don't want to repeat a bunch of things that he's already presented that, that are up to date. Um, but I think what we'll do now is just even having that basic understanding of, of map merge. Let's go back into the system and let's look at an example of this concept. Web IDE, and I didn't clean up from my previous video. Let's do that now. Uh, but let's create another stored procedure for this example. So we'll call it get PO by partner ID. And we've prepared a code snippet for that. SQL. Let's just go ahead and grab that. And this is going to be our main procedure that we call. We're going to take a partner ID input parameter and we're going to output purchase order data. So partner ID, purchase order ID, product ID, currency gross amount and quantity. So pretty straightforward here. Uh, but what you see we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to do a select from the um, header table and the item table. Uh, so from header table, inner join item table on purchase order ID. So that's um, pretty straightforward using a SQL, uh, a SQL inner join to, to go fetch the data. Um, that's, uh, that's good enough for now. We'll save that. And now let's create another procedure. Procedure, get PO gross amount by partner ID. And what we want to do here, we'll get the code snippet for this as well. Get PO gross amount by partner ID dot SQL. we are. So we're going to take a um, similar output structure here, partner ID, yeah, partner ID, purchase order ID, product ID, currency, gross amount, quantity, all the same here. Um, we are going to select partner ID from business partner. So we're going to get a list of all the partner IDs, and then we're going to loop over each, uh, loop over that, that, uh, uh, that internal table of partner IDs, and for every one of those partner IDs, we're going to call our other procedure, get PO by partner ID. So, and we're just going to have to go one at a time, execute that procedure over and over again, uh, take the results back, uh, and put them into this LTPO. And then as we get each result back, we're going to have to union that into our output. You know, so one chunk at a time. One, one business partner at a time, union that back together. So this 
this works, you know, logically, and this would probably be most people's first um, first thought when they're trying to write something like this, do a loop and, and assemble it a chunk at a time. Um, but, um, but it isn't necessarily going to give us the, the best performance, uh, as we'll see here. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and save this, and let's, um, let's do a build here. And let's go back over to the database explorer and say let's get the oops click the wrong one. Get PO by gross amount. That open now. And we execute and for each partner ID we get all their purchase orders. Um, so it's good. We got the the data that we expected, but we can see in the messages it took uh, 234 milliseconds still pretty fast but we have a very small data set you can imagine if this was millions or tens of millions or hundreds of millions of rows this is not uncommon in customer systems that um, that that uh, time could go up uh, quite a bit and we want to keep things very fast and as real time as possible so let's go back and let's rewrite our store procedure here um this uh to to use the map merge function so let's start by uh, by actually creating a uh, a new function and let's call this get po by partner id so part of the key here is this this mapper uh function needs to be a a table function so let's get the code snippet here. Partner ID table function SQL. We're basically just taking the same logic that we had before, uh, where we're selecting the uh, header and item table and performing the inner join. And instead of putting it in a stored procedure, we put it in a table function. Uh, so that we can use this inside of our map merge operation. Uh, so now we want to go to the get gross amount by partner ID, and we want to rewrite this so we can take out, and we'll keep the select, but basically we want to. Uh, Get rid of this big for loop here. We'll keep our output expo by partner ID, but now we're going to say map merge the SQL script keyword, and we're going to pass to it our ltbp. So our input parameter is our list of business partners, and then we're going to say what function do we want to call the get get PO by partner ID table function and its parameters are going to be the LTBP dot partner ID so you see here also how we can reference a single column inside um, uh, this this array um, so the map merge is going to do this one at a time just uh, like um, like the loop out would have done, but it can do it in parallel and, and it can union the results as they come back. So much more efficient processing wise. So we'll save that. And remember our time here was 234 milliseconds, 234. That should be easy enough for me to remember, right? Um, let's go ahead, double check. Yes, I'm done. Let's build everything. Okay, all successful. Go back to the SQL console. We'll execute the same 
stored procedure, but now the logic is implemented by the map merge. So 234 was our original timing. Now we run it again and get the same results. But now 88 milliseconds. So a significant reduction in time. Probably even if I run that again, let's see what I get. Now I get 26 and we get some we got some optimizations going on there on the uh, on the subsequent calls. Um, so 19 milliseconds. Once again, you know, we're working with a very small data set. Even with the very small data set, we see a pretty drastic change in time. I mean, we're talking about one-tenth the amount of time. As your data set would grow exponentially, the, the uh, reduction in time would also grow dramatically. We keep a, a very fast processing here compared to the, to the loop app because we can take uh, advantage in the massively parallel processing that, uh, that is so important in the HANA environment.